seven minutes late. Heavy on the foot, Frankie. We didn't figure on any rain. soup back here. Frankie, slow it down. Have they ever hit a bump or all angels? Maybe it won't spark. Boy, that little guy's sure scared. Picked up two minutes. It's gonna work.
Congratulating ourselves. Let's remember, we still got 900 miles to go. 900 miles through every cop between here and the coast. We laugh it up like a couple of clowns. Okay, okay.
We're coming into Montello. Montello. Leaping the fair city of Montella. You got 35 minutes to make Wendover. Stay on the main highway, no matter what. No shortcuts, no back roads. Our best cover is to move right along with the rest of the traffic. 2TR-70, 2TR-70, come in. Shut that thing off, will you? Use that police wavelength only when you're absolutely in the clear. Otherwise, keep your radio set at 1600. We leave here at 30 minute intervals. Gas up at Baker, Alamo, and Redlands. Stop to eat every eight hours, just sandwiches. Change drivers every four hours, and never go over 10 miles beyond the speed limit. And the cops search your truck. 
Keep talking to him. It's 7.30. All right, let's go. miles out, not even a whisper yet. That Eddie's a genius, huh? That's a college education for you. You know, it's his first job. When Frankie told me, I thought he was nuts. I wasn't hooking up with an amateur. A job like that. It's no amateur. Too bad my wife couldn't hold out. She waited for me for 23 years while I'm in and out of stir like it was in a revolving door. Two months ago, she dies. Well, I got a boy back east. Nothing but the best for him from now on out. He's going to the biggest and best college in Rio. Rio? One Sam 42 or one Sam 46, come in. 4L21, no want. Let me tell you about Rio. In the first place, there's over a million and a half people down there. Let's face it, you can get lost in a town that size, right? Me and the kid will take a boat, and by the time we get there, everything will have cooled off. Then I'll get Harold. That's my kid. I'll get Harold one of those sports jobs. You get a lot of beautiful streets down there. And get this, they don't use cement on the sidewalks. They got millions of little squares, all painted different colors, and they call them uh, mosaics. Yeah, that's it. And they got a lot of hills where you can buy a house, and nobody knows anything about it. And every day you can drive down to the bay, on the beach of Copacabana. Copacabana. You got the whitest sands in the world there. White sand, blue sea, plenty of room to move around. That's the place I'm telling you. You've been there, huh? No. John Oliver, Let's go. Which follows immediately. John Oliver, the 8 a.m. news. A bullet in the me tops the news today. In the most daring train robbery of all time. At approximately 4 a.m. this morning, an unknown number of men dressed in plastic coveralls and with ghostly white stockings covering their faces 
stopped and looted a special train carrying over $10 million in gold to the San Francisco Depository. Discovery of the robbery and broadcasting oh. of the alarm was delayed because of the remote locale of the train holdup. Police who have issued a 10th state alarm described it as the biggest train robbery in American history, and by the apparent speed with which it was executed, the best plan. The men were dressed in plastic coveralls and with ghosts. A 12 l run to the station. What are you, crazy or something? Don't worry about anything that's behind us. And now, back to the local news. The nation was sad today by the news from Pensacola, Florida. You know, 48's not too old. You know, I think I'll get married again. Uh, 5 King, 99. Stand by for the correction. 13A. Oh, I don't mean one of those young ones. I mean, you know, one that's had a little experience. Oh, you know, say about 30. Hey, with you doing all them stunts in the movies, you must have married a swell looking girl, huh? I never was married. Huh, no kidding. You never was? How come? I don't know. Say, Frankie. Yeah? How many races you driven in, hmm? Fifty. Yeah? I've always been fascinated with auto racing. You must have started pretty young. Yeah. Only sixteen. The officials didn't know that, though. In Jersey, you have to be eighteen, even for midgets. It was always big cars for me, though. I even talked a guy into letting me test his methanol special. Oh, man. You should have seen those other punks on that track choke in my exhaust. 102.7 average, five laps. 102.7, huh? Sounds good enough for Indianapolis. Gah! That wouldn't even get you to the preliminaries up there. Three years ago, I had to make 139.2 just to qualify. I could have won that year. Those crummy officials. Jumped the yellow light, didn't you? That crack up was almost into the infield. I didn't even think they were going to flash the yellow. So instead of holding position, I, I figured it'd be best if I got past the wreck fast. They bomb me for life. Well, if they hadn't, I wouldn't have the best wheel man in the business. And you wouldn't be a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. Train truck and the van taken care of? Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's a good spot. The trees are so thick you can't even see them. All right, it's 8.30. You warm up the truck, I'll open the doors. Yeah, it's 8.30 already, huh? Frankie. The truck. <laughs> Okay? Sure, sure, I'm okay. All right, let's go. We now take you to Salt Lake City, where KCBO special correspondent John Oliver is covering the most amazing robbery of all time. 
Here is a special bulletin on the gold train robbery. Police are asking all citizens to be on the lookout for two vehicles. One, a large moving van. The other, a crane truck, reported to be the vehicle used by the ghost-faced bandit. Anyone seeing vehicles of this description traveling in company or park together, please notify your local police at once. Unit 7, trucks investigated, not wanted vehicles. Return to station. KLK out. What's the trouble, officer? Why right, is this routine? What are you carrying? Furniture. My own. Let's take a look. Do you like gum? Oh, they say it keeps you from smoking. How long have you been on the road? I don't see. You left Salt Lake about eight hours ago. Eight hours from Salt Lake? You're really moving. Hey, Tom, come up here a minute. Would you kind of take it careful, fellas? If I get so much as a scratch on that stuff, my wife will kill me. <laughs> well, you know how women are. Oh, you're okay, buddy. Take it easy, pal. Yeah, you too. Hey, but does that gum chewing really help cut on your smoking? Oh, I don't smoke. I just want to make sure I don't start. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on there. Oh. Hold up there. Oh. 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 they say something. What do you want to hear, your name? Oh, you know what I mean. Nothing about those guards knocked out by the gas or the two guys be slugged. They weren't hit too hard, were they? How do you suppose the police know about the trucks and the mask? Yeah, but things happen sometimes. 609, can you handle the call? No. I know one thing. I'll be glad when we get past one of these roadblocks. This is it. With that look on your face, you might as well tell them the whole story. Get this service every day. That's okay. Let's sit. Sorry, buddy. Everybody out. Let's check the seal. Yeah, yeah. What's all that for? All right, just follow orders, fella. That guy looks like he's trying to make his own road. This creation of French seems... Well, he could get hurt that way. Okay, Dave. All secure. What happened to him? Uh, he got hurt. Hey, You're sir. okay. Say, um, I've been having a little engine trouble. Would it goof anything if I pulled over and had a look at it? Uh, pull over there about 25, 30 yards. Thanks a lot.
Let's move. Now to John Oliver in Salt Lake City for further news on the Gold Train robbery. The first break in the fabulous gold robbery occurred about an hour and a half ago when a part of the ten million dollars sold Watch to it! the Treasury Trench. Watch it! One of the bandits was shot and killed while attempting to run through a police roadblock. What's the matter, you deaf? I wonder how they found that out. You suppose they know which way we're heading? Well, if you'll clam up for a while, maybe we'll find out. The plain man was tentatively identified as Roland Rowley Adams. Police have intensified their search for the apparently abandoned van and crane truck. I wonder how they found Rowley. No wonder you got set up so many times. You think cops are dumb. Skeets. Look, uh, just relax, will you? Keep your eyes on the road. Maybe we should pull over and wait for Eddie. Maybe he'll want to change the plans. Maybe you'll keep quiet for a while, huh? Dragnet for the white stocking face bandits has now spread to 23 states, but still no trace of the two trucks believed to be carrying the remainder of the $10 million in gold. <laughs> the engineer and fireman of the train, injured during the raid, and the guards who were rendered unconscious by the gas fumes have all been released from the hospital at Vandevia, Utah. In an effort to trap the elusive gold bandit, police have tightened the web by calling in reservists thus allowing them to establish an unprecedented number of roadblocks covering every highway and back road as far east as Ohio. Authorities have asked all trucking companies to put as few vehicles on the road as possible in an attempt to narrow down the truck traffic. I'd have told you. There it is. Right around the back, to the left. Go on up, will you? Don't get many trucks nowadays since the new highway's in. They uh, caught those robbers yet? No. I don't know. They'll catch them. How's that? Can't help but catch them. Fellas like that hardly have a chance nowadays with radio and all that science against them. You think so, huh? Oh, sure. Now, back a few years ago, it was different. Man had a real chance. But nowadays, everything's got a system that's pretty hard to beat. I don't know. I still think it's possible. That's the way to talk. Don't let an old codger like me get you down. <laughs> yes, sir, I can remember when I was a young buck like you. Oh, it'll take 25 or 30 gallons. It's almost empty. Yes, sir. There are all sorts of opportunity. That was my mistake. There's too much opportunity. Now, if when I'd have been your age, I'd have hitched on to one single thing, 
and stuck to it, <laughs> there's no telling where I'd be today. You know, that's what I'm planning to do. I figure that if a guy is going to make it, he's got to specialize. He's got to find one thing and stick to it no matter what. That's the spirit. How's the oil? I'll check. The Canadian border is only 500 miles from here. New York's 2,000. Right. So the cops figured they're headed for the border. I say they're smarter than that. I say they're heading for New York. Well, you'll see. What would you like? A couple of ham sandwiches and two coffee to go. Black. White or black? White. You come through any roadblocks yet? Any what? Roadblocks. You know, the gold robbery. Oh. No, not yet. You know, I'd like to see him get away with it. You gotta watch her, mister. She's got a criminal mind. <laughs> what would you do with all that loot, Hayes? Go to London and Paris. Get the best of everything. Me? That builds me the fastest job on the road. About four inches off the ground, four pots, chrome heads, three-quarter inch camp. That'll feed the cops a lot of smoke, huh? <laughs> We now take you to Salt Lake City, where our special correspondent, John Oliver, is standing by with further information on the gold train robbery. The grim shadow of murder may have fallen over the desperate flight of the gold thieves tonight. Less than an hour ago, a passing motorist discovered the body of an elderly gas station attendant shot to death near Lynn, Nevada. Police ruled out robbery of the motive when the victim's wallet and the money in the cash drawer were found untouched. An unusually large sale was still registered on the gas pump leading the authorities to suspect the assailant to have been the driver of a commercial vehicle. Investigators are now working on the possibility that the killer may have been one of the gold train robbers. Stay tuned to this station for further details. What would make them do a thing like that? Money. Dollar twenty. He's a change, honey. Don't listen to him. He's always very generous with my money. I know the type. I know. Driving back this way soon?
Why would they pull a stupid stunt like that? You know, Eddie, maybe we shouldn't head for L.A. Maybe we should head straight for the border. You want to be scared, Frankie, go ahead. But don't be stupid. An idea couldn't get past the border right now. Seventeen. Seventeen, huh? Mine should be about eleven around now. I thought you said you wasn't married. Never seen him. Weighing station. Yeah. Five hundred pounds overweight. Better check him. City and our special correspondent, John Oliver. Astute police work tonight brought about the capture of two more members of the gang that held up the gold train. Less than an hour ago, guards at the small weighing station at Dalton, California, investigated the overweight load of a truck heading west and found one-third of the stolen gold hidden in the load of coffee. Authorities are certain that the remainder of the gang and the still missing third are in another truck still at large. Here's the weighing station. This is where they got Commando and Skeets. They'll really be on their toes, so watch your step. I'll do the talking. Flammables? Chemicals. Let's see a manifest. One of you come with me. I've got to break your seal. That's against the law, isn't it? What's the matter, pal? Look, officer, I just drive this thing. I'm not trying to be cute. But you know better than I do. I can't let anyone break that seal. Buddy, we could have found this whole truck if we had to. All right, you can have the whole truck, but not until I get somebody's name and that paper. Responsibility, you know. Some 
authorities believe that the bandits may not be headed for the border as reported earlier, but that they might have gone into hiding somewhere in California. These officials point out that the two trucks thus far captured were both taken on roads which terminate in California. No news of the phantom truck carrying three and one half million dollars in gold continues to be the big news up to this hour. One thing that is agreed upon, however, one truck and three and one half million dollars in gold seems to have vanished into thin air. Place a call to Los Angeles, please. Mr. Benjamin's office. Okay, honey. Yes, Fred. Mr. Benjamin, I'm sorry, but I'm just not feeling well this morning. Do you think you can get along without me today? Well, it'll be a struggle, but you go on home. Anything I can do? No, thank you. Don't bother. I'll be all right in the morning. I hope so. And don't fret about the office. Thank you. miles. Did you see that? We'll make it.
an ambulance. A stinking lousy ambulance. <laughs> Hi, Fran. I've got some coffee inside. Thanks, honey, but we've got to move fast. Frank, get the hatch open. talk to you. Well, what about? Air pollution control. What? Smog control. You better clean the oil ounces on that furnace. It's smoking worse than a tar factory. What's your name? Randy Holland. Well, I, I didn't know a thing about it. I'll have it fixed first thing in the morning. Now look, uh, you have to do that, officer? I'll have it fixed first thing. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Holland. Can I have your signature, please? You'll be notified when to appear to show proof of the improvement. Thank you. Right now. Are you crazy? After what we've been through? Look, you're going to get everything you want. But I've got everything I want. I didn't want you to steal. Eddie, a man's been killed. It's one o'clock. we got to be at the pier by ten. Turn on some news. Come on, Frankie, wake up. Come on, wake up. We got all that fighting to do. plate on it. Easy, Frankie. Gold can't take much strain, you know. It'll bend like a pretzel. set, Frankie? Yeah, I burned all the clothes and the furnace is shut off. Fran? All the doors in the back gate are locked and the rent's paid until the end of the month. Thanks, honey. Uh, Eddie? Yeah? What are we going to do about these other cars? We just have to leave them here. Yeah, but if somebody busts in, you know what they're going to find? One car registered to Mrs. Cora Riley and the other to Ann Martin. Oh, yeah, that's right. You set to go? Yeah. All right, start her up. Slow down a little. We don't want to get stopped by a traffic cop. 
Relax, Frankie. We got it made. I'm not going to relax until we get on that freeway and out of L.A. The boat doesn't leave until 11 o'clock, but we do have to have the car in the loading dock by 10.15. Ah, we'll make it with a half hour to spare. Right, Frankie? Yeah, sure. How's she handling? Oh, a little sluggish. We'll make it all right. Hey. There's the freeway now. Another 40 minutes, we'll be in Pedro. How do you feel now, Frankie? How much is my half of this jalopy worth? Where we're going, roughly a million. That's how I feel. Like a million. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear you laughing again, honey. I just hope it can last. You leave that to me. Sure, Fran. You take a tip from me. Warring doesn't get your thing. Gray hair and wrinkles. Look, no gray hair? Like a baby's? <laughs> Passports. What? Oh, oh, I've got them right here. All six of them. Any trouble? No, Tony had them ready along with the manifest. There you go. As soon as we get aboard ship, I'll destroy these three. Hey, look. Roadblock. It's got to be a roadblock. Why else would it be piled up like this? The morning rush, the people who work for a living, Frankie. We haven't moved a mile in five minutes. I've never seen so many cars. I love every one of them. Well, if they did have a roadblock here, we would have heard about it by now, wouldn't we, Eddie? The police don't know who we are, or where we are, or what we're driving. And the longer they stay confused, and after we get aboard that ship, it's only a few weeks to Lisbon. Here is a traffic bullet. Police state that the Harbor Freeway outbound is heavily congested from the interchange to the Washington Boulevard exit due to a traffic accident. Now that's just great. First they get you piled up like this, and then they tell you there's a wreck. Don't you ever stop complaining. Yeah, but if we knew about it, we could have taken the off-road. We haven't moved, moved a... a mile in the last five minutes. Yeah, I know. Hey, look, we must be getting near the accident. Well, that was smart, lady. Sorry, I guess I just wasn't paying any attention. Yeah, well, you guessed right. Frankie. Well, really, I said I was sorry. I am insured, and I'll be happy to do anything. Yeah. Ten I miles can... an hour, and you can't stop. What are you, blind or something? All right, all right. No need to talk that way. All right, let's well, just let's... forget all the right, whole officer. thing. Let's forget the whole thing. You stay where you are, lady. It's my car anyway. We'll get the cars on her. Come on, Frank. Let's get a hold of this thing. It's all right, officer. We got it. Yeah, let me get it again. Sit down there, will you, sir? You gotta get all your weight on there. If uh, anything yeah. happens, you get lost in the crowd. What? We've got to separate. Oh, Eddie, Remember no. what I told you now, the Whitman Hotel in San Pedro. Look, Oscar, you've got a lot better things to do than yeah. this. We can handle it. Well, we'll get it in a minute. Hey, Eddie, what's the matter? Hey, Eddie, what's the matter? Hey, Eddie, what's hey George, look at that bumper. It's gold. We better check it. 